the day has finally come. I reeled in the white whale. Two thousand one Chevy Astro van, all wheel drive, four point three. Seen this thing driving around for a while and I said one day for some reason I feel as though I'm gonna end up with that thing and sure enough I got the call Gotta have the goldfish. They stopped driving the old Astro. Picked it up at a repair shop. This whole doghouse that goes over the engine was off. All the pieces were thrown in the back. All the bolts were gone. I wanted to take it for a little ride, you know. I don't want just the... I want to hear it. I don't want to hear that stupid engine right there. So I threw it back together. A couple drywall screws right in there. It's good as new. Red. 
wasn't liking that Walmart Everstart that I put in recently there. Just uh, wasn't cutting it on the cold mornings. Just put in the old Die Hard Red. It was just bought in uh, December. This last December. Fairly new battery. Expensive one. So, it's a little things in life. You get an Astro van for junk and uh, you steal its die hard now it powers the old dually big block well I feel bad uh, many years of driving this thing and never touched the plugs or anything in it uh, matter of fact I did the headers and uh, last year and didn't even bother to uh, take the plugs out I was just very careful on uh, placing them in there to not break any of them but I feel pretty bad it, you know it it's been a long time and once in a while it would uh, give a little hesitation but I was chalking it up to a fuel issue because um, when I first got this truck I had a big problem with some crap in the tank it was like some black little specks of something going on and they were getting in the carb I had to I've had to take apart the carburetor a few times and uh, clean it out and uh, I guess I guess that went away and it's been fine as far as that but I was figuring maybe the carb needed another rebuild and I hadn't really wanted to do it, it was too busy but uh, I feel bad because I took out the plugs and look at these old ancient AC Delcos. There's nothing left of them. Look at that. You can't even see any of the electrode there. It's just uh, toasted right off. Look at that. It should be sticking up. It's not even there. It's how old these plugs are. And a couple of them were hard coming out too. It was kind of scary. Uh, the front ones on both sides were very hard coming out went back and forth a few times but um, yeah I started thinking you know someone said cap and rotor and you know it, like I said I never looked in there and I was thinking maybe that's what it was so I just bought everything I bought um, all AC Delco stuff plugs uh, cap rotor all that and then I got these uh, wires off of uh, eBay 
they're like a you know a generic like aftermarket uh racing you know wire high output whatever you want to call it but the reason why i got them is they're 45 degree angle boots and uh when i put the headers on i put the stock wires back and they were in pretty rough shape um and I put I put those socks over them. I got those high heat socks that go over the boots, and uh, so that seemed to work out. But I didn't know what was going on. If maybe I had a burnt one, or you know something, because it started to get pretty bad on the. But sometimes it would run really good, so it fooled you, and it, it seemed like a fuel issue to me. But where it came and went, but. Uh, I did a complete tune-up on it there recently. Finally got around to doing it. And uh, the cap and rotor didn't look too bad. But um, put brand new ones on. Put all the plugs in. All the wires. And wow, what a difference. I feel so bad driving it like that now. I feel bad for it, you know. And, uh, it wasn't its fault. It just didn't have nothing left of those plugs. So, this thing, uh, it's ready for, you know, the, uh, main street outlaws that, uh, nearly pulls the front wheels right off the ground. So, boy, does it run good. It's so amazing to drive it down the road. Um, you know, when you do a tune-up on something, you don't always get that full effect. You know, you think that, you know, you're doing something good, but in a lot of vehicles, you really can't tell a difference. Sometimes it's just good to, uh, to, you know, do a tune-up, I mean, for fuel economy and stuff like that, but, boy, you really tell the difference in this. Well... A little blind in one eye today had a little problem uh, for a few days felt like something was in my eye and uh, let it go tried to flush it out and you know do what I can I mean uh, many years of working on junk and stuff like that working on the cars got a lot of metal in my eyes um, but was always able to get it out never had to go to a doctor or anything like that and um it started to get really bad and uh i said well there's there's nothing more i can do i'm gonna have to go so i walked into uh i went to a clinic there that works with the hospital and they uh they took a look but the lady didn't have the correct machine and stuff to uh, to really see but she thought she could see something and uh so i had to go to a optometrist did i say that optometrist and uh sure enough uh lady put the old uh machine on there and really uh it was it, it was torture i tell you i tell you it was torture all kinds of numbing drops in my eyeball and uh got to sit still he can't blink but she looked in there, and sure enough, she saw she saw something in there. Still a little bit red. It's still a little blurry. Uh, the light, very sensitive. I can't see. I had to go search for these uh, sunglasses, old ones. They were actually in the camper. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, she... She looked in there, and uh, sure enough, she said, foreign object in your eyeball. And uh, seeing as it had been there for a few days, it sort of sealed itself in. Um, so she had to go at it with a little pick. And, um, you know, it could be a possibility of uh, some scarring there for forever. But uh, hopefully it heals over. She, every time she went at it, she... Uh, was picking little pieces away because it was rust you know me always messing with rust so little pieces kept breaking off and 
she had to go she had to go in there about 10 different times and it was uh it was torture i tell you but uh i'm glad to be out of there and uh it's already better today like i said still a uh, little bit of blurriness on this side when i look out but Last night, I couldn't even really watch TV. I had to actually wear my sunglasses to watch TV. It, the light from it uh, was very irritating. So, what have we learned, you know, all those years of, ah, I don't wear safety glasses, but, you know, um, probably should because something like that happens. Whew, I don't want to go through that again, so be very careful, I guess. So like I was saying, I picked this thing up at a uh, at a repair shop in town, and uh, Stan corrected. It's actually an O2. They told me it's O1. I just looked at the paperwork, but um, O2 Chevy Astro, and uh, I knew this van from the uh, nice logo on the windshield. Always seen it driving around town. Always said one day I'll get you the white whale. There it is. Um, mainly because some of these have really good kitty cats under them. Um, being the all-wheel drive version, I don't know what why, but they just uh, they're a lot better. So I always said, man, never got one of these before. Gotten regular Astro vans, um, but never the all-wheel drive one. I always kind of thought they were kind of a cool vehicle. Um, lots of room in the back, but yet not very long. You can see, fits in the garage really nice. It's not as long as it appears to be outside, but um, anyway, the kid said that uh, his uh, mechanic said that diagnosed it. Uh, I broke down when they were moving out of town, moved about two and a half hours away down southern Maine, and uh, they diagnosed it as possibly needing a time and chain, a time and chain let go. Now, that's a very rare thing to happen on these uh, 4.3s. 4 that's not really a very common thing. Um, so right there, it was kind of suspect to me, but... I said, yeah, I'm interested, and he said, oh, he said, I'm um, very thankful uh, because no one else will come up there that far up north to uh, to get it or to buy it. None of the junkyards want to, want to give me anything for it, so I said, yep, yeah, well, that's what I do, and that's why I'm up here, so uh, he said, yep, yeah. so you're my guy, he said, uh, meet you over there, whatever, so... Meet over there, pay him for it, get the title. He gets a few things out of it, and uh, they came out uh, with a little tractor, and they just picked it up by the trailer hitch and slid it over for me, got it out from where it was in the snowbank, and uh, I said, no, I can winch it up from there, no problem. So as I went to, uh, I hooked it up, hooked the winch cable on it, and um, I opened the door, I noticed that it had juice inside, and uh, I said, oh, that's weird. You know, usually if somebody is diagnosing a van and has the um, the whole inner engine cover, aka doghouse, off, you'd figure that they would have the battery unhooked, but it seemed kind of weird to me. But anyway, uh, I was going to just... You know, put the window down, so I, I turned the key on, and uh, I said, what the hell, you know? Well, the window didn't go down, needless to say, that doesn't work, but um, I just, you know, was standing there like nobody else, and I just hit the key. Well, I hit the key, and it started right up. The thing was running. I couldn't believe it. I was told it didn't run. It was... They came out. They said it was blown up. Um, so. 
whatever. Keep my mouth shut. Uh, I still winched it up, even though I could have drove it just for looks. I just uh, left it running and used the power steering and uh, steered it up, winched it on my trailer, and got the hell out of there. Well, you notice in that, that other clip there, kind of did a little funny thing, and I think I know what's going on here. Um, I think it's just the starter. I think the starter is messed up and because I couldn't get this thing to start again. I started it a million times. I drove it around. I drove it around the neighborhood, and I said, man, this ain't a bad van, you know. Uh, brakes were good. Transmission shifted good. Everything seemed to be okay. Um, so I got it in here. Uh, before we got more snow last night, so I didn't get it all uh, all covered in snow. So today I could get a closer look and clean it out and look inside for any goodies or whatever. And uh, all of a sudden I went to start it. I couldn't. It uh, makes a terrible, you know, clunking, rattling, whatever noise when you try to start it. Like something's broke. So I think that they they thought that that was, uh, you know, an interference inside the engine and stuff was hitting each other. And uh, I I still don't know why they took off the whole doghouse and everything. The whole engine was exposed at the back. Um, I don't know what they were going after back there. But, you know, time and chain's at the front of the motor, so um, don't make much sense there. But anyway, they said... Way too expensive to fix, and they wouldn't want to do it anyway because it's in a van and it's very hard to uh, to get at. So um, they got another car and they moved, and the thing's sitting there. So he had to pay a bill, a diagnosis bill, you know, to them. And but then I turned around and bought the van off of them, so they were happy and got their pink dice off the mirror and. Went about their way. Life goes on, but um, I don't know. I, I I think this thing just needs a starter. Doesn't seem very bad. I uh, jacked it up and laid under it. Looked around at the frame and all the stuff in the front end and all that. Make sure nothing was, you know, rotten or anything or broken. And uh, it don't seem like a very bad vehicle. You can see that it'd be a little bit of a job to uh, to do any work to that engine. You'd have to take off a lot of stuff, and then you'd be getting in there. Uh, it just wouldn't be fun anyway, so the starter definitely looks rusty and old under there, but so does everything else. So I, I don't know. I'm thinking I might try to get a starter for this thing. Try it. I mean... It's got a class 3 trail hitch on it. It's pretty dirty inside, even though I did clean all the trash out. Found a few dollars worth of change. But, you know, you vacuum it out, all the goldfish and everything. And uh, it's, got the, it's got the two rear seats. Plenty of room. I don't know if it'll start now, but... See that little clunk? It almost didn't, didn't go there, it didn't catch. So... See, it don't sound right. I don't know, what do you think? Tell me what you think. You know, it uh, sounds like the starter to me. I mean, hopefully the flex plate isn't screwed up like the gears on that, but um, highly unlikely because the flex plate, and some of you might call it a flywheel, but technically on an automatic transmission, it's called a flex plate. 
and a flywheel is on a standard transmission manual so a quick little thing for you there but uh, so sometimes easier just to say flywheel it sounds better flywheel flywheel sounds good flex plate eh, kind of an ugly word but anyway the flex plate is made of a uh, very strong metal very uh, high grade and the starter gear is made of a softer metal so it's made for that to wear out first so that you can just replace the starter rather than have to replace flex plate because obviously it's a huge job to do that because you got to pull the transmission off uh, to do that and in this vehicle this has a big old transfer case under it because it's all-wheel drive so it's got a big transfer case like a four-wheel drive truck would have and uh, it has a whole front differential in it and all that so kind of uh, kind of a cool vehicle but like I said uh, cats are uh, probably very expensive on this so stand to make some money for what I paid um, but I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do yet but so I'm at one of those it's one of those ones I'm at a standstill you know um, definitely wouldn't want to sell it to somebody like that because you know they come out tomorrow and go to start it it's gonna do that but it might start a million times, you know, fine. Just sometimes it catches that bad spot. And I think that wherever they were at the store or something and they, you know, the family was in it and they turned the key and it was doing that clunking and they said, oh, shit, something's wrong. And then uh, they have it towed and at the shop, it's doing that same thing. To me, it sounds like I said, uh, sounds like that starter, but I don't know.